what is a real Bible believer? Um, I've heard this thing said a lot of times. People say, I'm a Bible-believing Christian. And it's really very simple. I mean, it, you can make it complicated and get into all kinds of argument stuff, but the point is, even the most radical, Bible-rejecting atheist can understand a very simple, logical thing. Okay? This book right here, King James Version, is my belief. I am a Bible believer. I believe that this is God's perfect written word. I'm not going to add to it. I'm not going to subtract from it. This book that I'm holding in my hands is God's book. Okay? You say, well, I don't agree with it. I don't, I don't believe in God. I understand that. I understand what a Bible-believing Christian is, though. You see, I don't hold up a catechism in this hand and the Bible in this hand. I don't say, well, my church, there are no church buildings in the New Testament, but uh, I'm still a Bible-believing Christian in all matters of faith and practice. No, you're not. No, you're not. Um, and I think we need to define that, right? And I'm not, in this little video here, I'm not saying that somebody that's, if you don't hold to this standard here, that you're lost and on your way to hell or something like that. There are people that get spoiled through philosophy, all right, that are saved. Um, I believe that there have been men that have gone to church buildings and whatever else that were saved men, all right. Uh, I was certainly saved back when I was going to one, back before the Lord showed, showed me the truth about it. But uh, I'm going to go over seven points here real quickly um, just to reinforce what a Bible believer is. And if you're not a Bible believer, if you can't conform to these different points, um, then quit calling yourself a Bible-believing Christian. You can say you're saved and whatever else, but you can say, uh, you know, I'm not really a Bible believer, you know, but I, I am a Christian. I believe the Bible's, you know, a good book and whatever else. But there's so much lying and deception about this book. First of all, the Bible teaches that the King James, excuse me, um, to be a Bible believer, you have to have a standard, a perfect standard, right? And the Bible teaches that you, revelation comes as a result of what you believe. All right, go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13 says, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Now that's just common sense. If you think that this is God's book, but then you say it's just the word of men, it's just a translation, how does that work? Um, no, it's, you're going to be a hypocrite if you, don't, if you say that this is God's book, but it's got errors and whatever, you know, that doesn't work. All right? A Bible-believing Christian will say, this book that I'm holding in my hands is perfect. I believe that this is God's book. I believe it's a supernatural book, and I'm not going to mess with it, all right? And that's when it will work in you and work in your life, okay? Um, point number two, the King James Version is not to be added to or subtracted from, okay? And uh, I, think, I think I'm just going to go, I'll just give you the scriptures and tell you what's basically there. We're not going to go through this because I want to keep this video short, but... Proverbs chapter 30, verses 5 through 6 talks about, Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Um, that's there. Revelation chapter 22, verse 18 through 19. If any man you know, takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life. You know, And then God adds the plagues to anybody who adds to the word. So uh, it's all those things are all through the scriptures. So it's not just Revelation 22 is about the book of Revelation. Uh, no, it's all through the scriptures. And it's just common sense. Again, being a Bible-believing Christian is about common sense. If this is God's book, why on earth would I feel good about going in there and saying, oh, I don't like that part, remove that, or, oh, you know what? I don't like the way it says it. Let me just kind of rewrite it here a little bit to make it sound better. If this is God's book, you don't add to it or subtract from it. Okay? This is the standard. All right? which is point number three, actually. The King James Version is the standard, the standard for our lives, okay? Um, James chapter 1, verse 22 through 25 talks about being a doer of the word and not a hearer only, all right? This is the standard. Not, well, I, I use the King James Bible and also the Textus Receptus. If you can hold two different things in your hand as your standards, 
then guess what? Who's the final authority? Not here, not Texas Receptus. You are. You have to judge. And I've seen this with pastors. They'll stand up and they'll preach this as God's perfect word or, God, or God's word. They, the guys I've known won't say perfect, but this is God's word. This is God's book. Um, but let me show you where it should be better translated. Actually, the word here in the Greek should be such and such. Um, then it's not your standard, you see. And uh, if this is your standard, you're not going to do anything to add to it. You're not going to say, well, I'm a Trinitarian. There's no Trinity in here. Okay, the word Trinity doesn't exist. Well, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, that's not in here. God in three persons, not in here. Uh, have you gone to church? That's not in here either. You see? Um, do you wear your Sunday best? Not in here. You understand what I'm saying? And I know some smarty little guy is going to say, uh, well, King James or uh, uh, YouTube videos are, you know, public videos are not in the Bible either or something, you know, high definition videos. We'll get to that. We'll get back to that. But point number four, there are saved brethren who use the King James Version, but they have been spoiled by philosophy. Talked about that in another video. Um, you can be spoiled by philosophy. Uh, there are people that have the right testimony. It wasn't that they got saved as a two-year-old in Sunday school. That's false. Okay, nobody gets saved as a little child, truly born again. All right, you have to come to a place where you understand that you've sinned against a holy, righteous God, and then God will save you. All right, but people will have the right testimony. I've seen that. Some people will have a great testimony, but then they get into study and whatever else, and they get spoiled by philosophy. Peter Ruckman was a great example of that. Um, great man. Uh, love his work, but he was spoiled by philosophy in a number of areas. Very, very confused on the Trinity subjects especially. And I have a video out. I'll put the link to it later on. The video plainly shows Peter Ruckman saying, if you have a church building, you are anti-New Testament. And he didn't want to, you know, he had a church building because he didn't want to be thought, he didn't want people thinking he was, you know, weird or on the lunatic fringe or something like that. Um, he was ashamed to follow the scriptures. Peter Ruckman was not a Bible-believing Christian. He defended the King James Bible, he used the King James Bible, he preached the King James Bible, but he didn't truly believe that this was his standard for all matters of faith and practice. And his little graduates and stuff too, um, Gene Kim is one, I saw he renamed his, his channel Real, Real Bible Believers. He's not a real Bible believer. He's another guy like Ruckman. I'm not saying the guy's lost, I'm not saying he's saved, whatever. You know, I'm not going to waste time on that. What I'm saying is he's not a Bible-believing Christian. Because if he was, he would get rid of a lot of the stuff that he's doing. He'd say, well, the Bible doesn't say go to church, so I can't really do that and call it a Christian practice. Where does the practice come from? You see, it comes from Roman Catholicism. Christians in the past were not meeting in church buildings. Okay? Um, number five, point number five. Judgment comes from the Scriptures not our feelings or opinions. Okay? That defines a Bible believer. I'm going to judge you from this. Okay? Um, supporting Scripture on that would be Acts chapter 17, verses 10 through 11, where you have the Bereans that search the Scriptures daily to see if those things were so. Paraphrasing there. But uh, this, is the, this is the standard, and we judge things by this book. Okay? Um, number six, point number six, ministry where you're evangelizing the lost, is public. Not in some little social club that you control called your church building. All right, that's very important. Again, you know, that's why I'm here on YouTube. I realize that, you know, like I said earlier, people will say, well, video ministry online, online video ministry is not in the Bible, so I guess you're a hypocrite because you're not a Bible believer. I can't. It's public ministry in the 21st century. All right? You find a way to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I've reached... Thousands and thousands of people over the years, uh, millions of video views, but thousands and thousands of people that we've heard from who've had their lives changed as a result of this ministry, the Lord working through this ministry. Say it that way. Okay? It's public ministry. I don't have some church building someplace where I, I invite people out to it and then I can control whatever goes on there and stuff like this. I'm the official man of God in the place and... And I have my little cult following, my little inner circle of friends that come over to my house to eat Sunday afternoon after the service is over. 
Okay, <laughs> I was in those little circles, all right, in multiple Baptist churches. So, you know, and, and where's the name Baptist church, by the way, in the Bible? It's not there. And again, you know, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, it does, because these people just make it all about that whole system. Uh, their church building isn't just some place, well, you know, you can worship there, you can fellowship there, or you can fellowship anywhere. They don't believe that. They don't believe that for one minute. The church building is a holy place. Just like a Catholic believes. I was raised in that stuff. I mean, give me a break. Um, Acts chapter 20, verses 20 through 21 talks about that they taught publicly and from house to house. How many Christians do that? Uh, not many. You go out and you teach publicly. I do it online. And if I meet people and they say, you know, come on over to our house, I would like to hear more or whatever else, we'll go house to house. It's fine. Um, and number seven, a Bible believer is sanctified by conforming more and more to the King James Version as their life goes by. Again, I'm not going to rip on some brand new Christian because they have cigarettes or they're playing video games or they're, you know, get, they got drunk the one time or whatever, or they have a pornography problem or whatever else. But if I see somebody that's been saved, you know, saved for 20, 30 years or something like this, and they're messing around with the, the wicked, sinful, fleshly types of things, okay. I'm going to judge somebody like that, right? Um, a Bible believer is somebody that the Lord will change their lives. He gives them this book, and they believe this book is God's Word, and then they say, okay, I'm going to conform to what this book says. Again, somebody going to a church building, I'm not going to condemn that person. But when that person comes back and says, I don't care, you know, okay, there are no church buildings in the New Testament, but I don't care. I love my church. I'm going to keep going to my church. I don't, I don't care what the Bible says. Uh, now we have a problem. Now we have a problem. Don't call yourself a Bible believer. All right? I get a little bit irritated with that. I saw Stephen Anderson. You know, I'm a Bible-believing Christian. He's not a Bible-believing Christian, not at all. He's disqualified in many, many ways. Uh, a lot of these guys, I'm a Bible-believing Christian. No, you're not. If you call yourself Baptist, there's no scripture for that. If you believe in the Trinity, there's no scripture for that. It's a satanic heresy. If you have some church building somewhere or whatever else, you're not a Bible-believing Christian. Quit calling yourself one. All right? It's just that simple. And I can go down through, there's a whole bunch of other things I could list there. All right? But I've said enough. It's just a, a thing that I needed to put out there because there's new people coming along all the time and they'll they'll see, oh, there's some other guy and he's preaching, you know, whatever thing. And they see Gene Kim, you know, clickbait Kim over there and, and he's got real Bible believers, you know, like he's the real deal and, and people like me are not. You know, I'm just some kind of rogue preacher or whatever else. Please. <laughs> I follow the scriptures, okay, in practice. He doesn't. And people like him don't. And Peter Ruckman did not follow the scriptures. Again, I'll put the link to the video at the end. Um, it all comes down to, brethren, what do you believe about this book, if you're saved? If this King James Bible is God's word, then you better submit to it. Because you're going to be judged by the book. Uh, how did you follow this book? Okay? That is going to be it. Please take heed to what I've said.